It's Jamie Moore here. You're on the Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast with you every Wednesday on offtheball.com. And if you're listening to the podcast and you'd like to watch the interviews, most of them are recorded in our video studio here in Marconi House. And you can watch them on youtube.com forward slash off the ball. It's time now for our first division focus. I'm very happy to welcome the Longford Town goalkeeper, Lee Stacey, to the studio. Very well dressed for the occasion. Lee, how are you? Thanks very much, Jamie. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Delighted to be here. Now, Lee, we were just saying I've been at your uh, last two, your only two home league games so far for Longford Town. Against Drada and against Shells. Two clean sheets. So uh, it's been decent home form so far. I'm going to be at your game against Bray on Saturday as well. Yeah, two um, two really tough games. Like, obviously, Drada and Shelburne both going for, for promotion like ourselves. So, um to win both games and keep two clean, two clean sheets scoring five goals very happy yeah now there's been some debate about a save that you made in that draw of the game and I want to just uh, show our viewers now if we can roll that please this is a save Lee look to your left there oh Jesus what a save says the, the people in the crowd can we see that one more time please just for another little look a little action replay so it's a cross into the box it's flicked onto the front post bang you've saved it so I was at the game and I tweeted straight away saying it was one of the best saves I've ever seen. What did you see of it and how did you make it? Um, I don't know. I was, like, I was just constantly moving with the ball. So it just, it just my footwork got me there because like, obviously I'm not, I'm not the, the biggest goalkeeper in the world but um, just footwork kept me eyeing the ball and then I have a good spring so I just went for it and uh, I got a nice hand on it and how it went. So thankfully... Um, it was a nice save and it's, it's done the rounds, it's done well on, on, uh, online, so yeah, I'm delighted with it. Yeah, I should say that video courtesy of the Longford Town Twitter page. Is it the best save you've ever made? No, I don't think so. Okay, well what was the best one? Um, I think against St. Pat's in the Leinster Senior Cup final last year, I pulled one off on Ian Birmingham. It was a cross again, another header actually, but it was, um, it went, I kind of had to go across the goal and then he went... It was going top corner over the other side, so I had to get, I don't know how I saved it, I got all the way across and just tipped it around the post. So um, I think that, that might have edged it. So they're both what you would call reaction saves, that you don't have too much time to see it, it's just all the kind of sh short stuff you've done in training, and yeah. then you're kind of, it's almost like muscle memory sort of thing. Yeah, exactly, Like that's why we do we do these, these sort of movements in training. Um, it's, it's mainly footwork, like it's not, um, it's not anything else, it's literally using your feet and the quickness of your feet to get you there to make the save. And it's the one thing that you know we always speak about, you know, striker scoring, late winning goals and stuff. But that save, for example, keeps a clean sheet. And, and I know you guys won that go that game by more than one goal. But for example, if, if it had been a one 0 victory, you're going. That's actually a match winning save, like. Yeah, well, if you look at that, that point of the game, obviously you were there. Um, it was we went in nil nil at half time. Um, we changed formation, we were playing with no wingers, so Drada had a lot of chances, Now, as did we in the half, but another day I don't, I don't save one or two of them and they go in and you might not win that game or, at all, like you, might, you could lose like 1-0 on, on the, other, the other side of things, so um, to pull off them saves and help the team get the three points, it's um, usually important and we're on a good roll now, so kind of moments like that kind of spur you on, you know. Yeah, and I, I love seeing like if a keeper makes a save or like a centre back makes a, a match winning block, they actually kind of celebrate as if they've scored a goal and it's something that not too many players do, but to actually realise God I've actually made a massive contribution to the result here. Yeah, definitely. Like um to be fair it's it's my first time as a number one and I've obviously started the season and I've contributed in nearly in every every game we've played with, with decent saves and we are still still unbeaten, so um yeah, it's huge. Like, and equally, when the when the lads are scoring goals, I'd be joining in with them and celebrating as much as I can. I'd be nearly out of breath coming back after I'd run the length of the pitch to celebrate with Sam Vernon or Dan Bourne or whoever's scoring the goals. So, um, yeah, it is. It's it's as, it's as important as striker scoring goals. Yeah, you mentioned as well it's your first time being a number one, and you played for Shamrock Rovers back as a kid and, and spent time at Bowes at Bray, and most recently at Shells. Your, your last time on the podcast last year, you, you actually said you weren't sure if you were going to stay at Shells because you wanted to be a number one. The opportunity came to move to Longford, and, and you've you've played every game. How have you enjoyed kind of going into training every week, knowing that if you perform to your level, you're going to be picked on the on the Friday night or in, in the Longford home case on the Saturday night? Well, yeah, as you said last year on the podcast, it was, I think it was August, just before the launch, there was the launch for the cup. Yeah. I, I had already my mind made up; I was going to be a number one wherever I was. So, whether that be at Shells or somewhere else, I was just going to be a number one. So, you can't be playing. And I've only played six league games, and I've I've got a lot of publicity for it so far. I've kept four clean sheets in six games. Of of one player a month for Longford in, in my first, first time actually playing so um, it's great gives you a great sense of belief um, 
I'm still a young goalkeeper, so I've loads to look forward to. And like, if there's one or two things that don't go right fit in the game, which thankfully things have went well enough so far, you can look to on what you can improve on the training. So look forward to each day, and um, you're always constantly looking forward to the next game and working towards how how we can perform the best you can. What age are you as a young goalkeeper? 26. Okay. But I only I do only feel about 20. That's being honest with you. Um, I feel. Is that because you haven't been kind of in in the the kind of first team every week for the for the previous clubs or? Well, I don't think so. I think um, I think I've been ready the last couple of years. I think I've just been unlucky to play behind Dean Delaney twice, Peter Cherry and Shane Supple for for um, a couple of a couple of months. So I've been unfortunate with with the goalkeepers who've been behind. But I do feel I've been ready now. Obviously, I'm definitely ready now. I'm, I'm, I'm playing, but um, just my body, I feel, I feel fresh. I, um, obviously, we all have little niggles, but like, I feel I'm flying. Like, so talk to me about being the goalkeeper for Longford because we've spoken about the saves and the clean sheets and that side of the game. You've also said yourself that you're not as tall as some other goalkeepers in the league, but it doesn't affect your playing. But then also watching Neil Fenn teams play, they do look to pass the ball and play out from the back and like. In comparison to some other teams, certainly in the first division, the amount of time you would have the ball at your feet in a game and being asked to actually play a pass to someone that if the pass doesn't get where it needs to go, you probably can see the goal or at least give the other team a proper chance to score. And that's something that, for example, when you were playing at Shells, Shells were like yeah. bang, 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 let's, let's knock the ball long, whereas Longford are totally the opposite. Yeah, well, I think if you look at the cup team that Shells played last year, we played a lovely brand of football and we done really well in some competitions. We obviously won one of them and then we were beaten by Derry. And... Um, and the EA Sports Cup, which they, they went on to win, but we played a lovely brand of football, and it was the same when I was playing college football with the IT. It was all from the back, and I was never necessarily that was never my strongest point, but I've worked on it in the last number of years, especially with Ian Fowler at Bray Wanderers. He um, he really really helped me with um, with footwork, and I always had a decent ping of a ball, but necessarily playing from the back wasn't my strongest. But I've worked really hard in it, like. Like a four, I'm always a force train and last live, and that, that's what I'd be working on. And it's actually one of the strong points in the game. And when Neil, when Neil asked me to meet up, he told what he said for me was he'd seen me a couple of times playing, and he was very impressed with the type of goalkeeper. And shot stop was good, comfortable taking crosses, and I can play from the back. And obviously that's that's the way he he builds his team. So I, I was actually felt quite privileged to to be asked to sign for Longford with that type of manager and, and the, the style of football he plays. So. So how much work have you, you know, you mentioned your work at Bray under Ian Fowler and stuff, and I'm sure as well at Longford, how much work goes in from an individual point of view in kicking and the different types of passes you have to play, and then also in the actual, you know, small side of games and in the sessions where you're being asked to kind of try to do these things, which, which then translate onto the pitch and the games? Um, it's, it's endless amount of work. Like, it's not necessarily you're, you're constantly kicking or whatever. It's yeah, mainly just getting your touch right. That's the main thing. Your your first touch. So, I suppose when I went to, when I signed at Bowes first with Fred, it was mainly getting me up to speed, physicality, f- physically wise. Then I went up down to Bray and then really worked on my touch and then my kicking was always decent. So, it just implement that into the small games and phases of play and it's, I'm really comfortable at that. And even on here, um, last year, like he, when he recommended me to Neil, he said, "Yeah, he's one of the best passers." On the pitch, never mind. Um, as as just as a goalkeeper, so um, it's just constantly you're constantly walking on it all the time. Like if you if you stop walking on your touch or whatever, you, you will know so it won't be as good. So yeah, constant work, it's endless. Yeah, so things then come on to match day, and you're being asked to try and do this, the, you know, the exact same things. I remember a game I saw early last year, and Mick Kelly was in goal, and it was one of those ones where I can't remember who it was against, but he played a pass late in the game it was like it was against Cove and Longford were winning and he played a pass late in the game lost the ball Cove scored he equalised and Longford dropped two points and I'm sure Neil Fenn would have said after it's, you know you know, why did you lose the ball but at the same time he's asking you to play so you have to try and make sure that you do get it right because if you don't get it right it gives the team a chance but when the manager wants you to play I'm sure that gives you some sort of a freedom to go well he's asked me to do it so if it doesn't go right I'm not fully at fault like uh, see this is what's great about Neil um, like last year I think Longford were a little bit guilty of overplaying a little bit, yeah. and especially at the wrong times. Like, um, but Neil trusts me enough to make the decision that's best for the team. So I play as much as I can, but I've also uh, an accurate enough long pass 
to play forward when we need. So if I don't think if I think the team's going to be at risk, like I'm, I'm not looking for the necessarily the first pass. It's the second pass. So if, I, if I'm not passing to a player, thinking, oh, there I've done my job. I'm thinking, what's it? What has he got on? Now generally we're good at getting out of areas anyway, but if we're one nil up with 20 minutes to go. I'd be looking to put it on either Aaron Dobbs or Jamie Doyle's chest, something like that. And so far, they've been quite accurate. They've been landing generally on um, where they're supposed to go. So we continue to do that as, um, unless we're told otherwise, you know. Yeah, and in, in terms of Longford overall, I just looking at the league table here. You know, it's still quite early in the season, and like Longford are top on 14 points, played a game less than a lot of the teams around you. Limerick on 14, and then you've got Drod on 13, Cabin Teeley maybe surprisingly on 13, then you've got Shells and Bray on 12. And that's the top six. And you're looking at that going, everybody was saying Shells are going to walk away with this league and that hasn't been the case so far. And Longford have the best defence. You've got the best goal difference in plus seven. It's been a really good start considering even the players that, that Neil lost in the off-season. Like, looking at the table now, it's been a great start. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, everyone was talking about Shells and Bray and they both have decent squads. Like, <coughs> But I think there's, I think Longford at the moment we're, we're hungry. Like, we... We have a lot of young lads, and I know there's one or two older lads as well, but we're, we're hungry to impress, you know. Um, like, we're a good team unit there as well. We're all fighting for each other. Even the, the win against Wexford there the other night, we, we fought endlessly for each other, like, and that's what, like, one or two times, like, Anto has headed the ball off the line against Strata, and um, Shane Elwardy the same against. Um, against Shells and like that's the difference we're, we're willing to die for each other and I think that will go a long way towards the end of the season in the promotion race like these lads actually have a point to prove and will back each other it is obviously a really tough league you lose a game and you're 6 or 7 it's, it's mental so we'll be looking to stay unbeaten for as long as possible and just keep on trying to do the right things on the pitch So how do you work on that team culture that you've just spoken about about you know the team wanting to fight for each other, being friends off the pitch, and I'm sure that there's lots of, of work goes in, you know, from the point of view of the players in, in seeing each other away from the training ground, not just going on the piss, but maybe going yeah. for a game of golf or, or going for yeah. a Nando's or going for a coffee. And, and then when you do go onto the pitch, that definitely makes a huge difference. But not every team is like that. So how have you guys been, especially with the amount of new players in the group, being able to, to kind of nail that down so quickly? Yeah, I think no matter what, like um, if you've good lads in the dressing room, it, it will just happen automatically. Like, and we, we have a good mix, mainly young players, but if Paul O'Connor and Conor Kenny, a couple of more experienced boys, and Dean Zambra as our captain. So I think... It's just about having a good laugh in the dressing room before, like before training or whatever, because we don't. We've only had one team night out, and we are looking to organise another one down the line. But like, it's not it's not a big drinking team or anything like that. So um, it's just having a good laugh with each other before we obviously start working. And I think um, I think we do that well. I think A. Darren is he's a good vocal point. Like he's um, he's always in the mix. He's obviously a local hero, and. Um, we we get a good laugh out of him and we'd be calling along for the Dublin club just winding him up and everything mm. like that and it's, it's, it's good like um, we've we've good good bunch of lads in, in that team like yeah Dervin's done uh, really well as a local lad at midfield but uh, speaking of Dublin you guys actually train in Dublin as well and I think at Lone do it and some of the League of Ireland clubs that are that are based around Dublin lots of the players all of them nearly are from the Dublin area the managers for example in the case of at Lone Terry Butler is a dub Neil Fenn lives in Dublin yeah. even though he's originally from England as well so you guys actually have to jump in a carpool to go to your home games but for your, your, all your sessions and when you're playing the likes of Shells and others you're actually you, you don't have as far to travel No it's gas like all the home games are nearly the way ones Yeah but um, you don't mind Longford's only down the road and you were saying about carpool and me and Jet like I drive the van so me and uh, Jamie Hollywood go everywhere together, and we uh, we'd have a little song, and and we'd, we'd have a dance and whatever, and then we um, we get Nando's every Thursday, and we we eat as much as we can like together. So like me and him to have a great laugh as well, like you know. Um, but it is it, you go to Longford though on a, every second Saturday, or whatever. But you don't mind the talk; it's such a great pitch generally, and um, yeah, it feels like it doesn't feel like it's um, obviously I said all the home games. <laughs> for me, our away once for long for the dozen. I don't mind traveling down there once every two weeks and playing in decent service. Yeah, I, I really enjoy going along for myself as well. And, and for doing this podcast, we do you know as much on the first division as we do on the Premier. But because on a Friday night, 
just generally games in Dublin involving the Premier Clubs and, and we have to cover them because it's the Premier League so I enjoy going to Longford on a Saturday and being able to see for example I haven't seen Bray yet I haven't seen Shells so I saw them against you guys and stuff so I'd be able to go there every Saturday it's only an hour and a bit from the Lucan's Pass so it's not bad and we'll both be there on, on Saturday league watching Longford against Bray we've spoken about how tight the league table is and, and Bray coming off the back of a 1-0 defeat to Shells last weekend the Bray manager was in your seat last week Gary Cronin and spoke really well about you know his team and, and what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build and just on that team, do you get to see many of the other first division teams, given that you guys play some home Saturday games? Do you, on a Friday night, head to somewhere in Dublin to watch maybe some of the other clubs? Yeah, well, um, as, I, as I said there, me and Jamie actually uh, try and get to as many games as we can. Like, I, I, I'm a big League of Ireland fan. I love football, so I try and get out and uh, watch as many games as possible. I was only at the Ireland 21s game there, whenever it was there, two weeks ago. And I was at Cabin Tilly the day before, and I bumped into Keith Long both days, and he said, will you take a day off? <laughs> You said so, the same to him. Yeah, exactly. He was there about the days. So, me and Jamie are going to head up to Drogheda now on Friday and watch Shells against Drogheda. I think that'll be a good game. And, um, yeah, I've seen Shells a good few times, seen Bowles, I've seen Rovers. So, yeah, I'll get to as many games as I can. I think Shells, um, I think the only game is Rovers and Waterford in Dublin. So, I think Drogheda and Shells will be it. It tastes your match to go and watch, so we're going to head up there. Yeah, the games in the first division this weekend, as Lee mentioned, Drada against Shells is a quarter to eight kickoff. All the games actually a quarter to eight. Uh, it's Limerick against Wexford, Cabin Tealy at Lone, and also Galway against Colvin. That one game on Saturday, Longford against Bray, that is a half seven kickoff. And I think there's one other Premier game in Dublin on Friday. Is there UCD? Yes, UCD against Derry is only going to go to that and watch UCD, so that's uh, involved in the Premier as well. So when you go to those games, then do you, like, take mental notes, take physical notes, do you speak to your goalkeeping coach, speak to your manager and go, listen, I've seen, I watched Bray two Fridays ago and I think this is what we might do, or do you just head along as a fan and, and then in the game itself you might say, right, well, I've watched that striker, I think I know where he, you know, where he wants to run or where he wants to, to put the ball. Um, no, I would just take mental notes, like I'd be constantly, um, constantly thinking like, oh, this and that and whatever, and I would go and speak to Dara or Neil regarding um, what I've seen and, and what I think and, Obviously, uh, I've, I've seen shells loads of times, so I had a had a good idea of what they were like. So I would have spoke um, just briefly. It's not not major. To be fair, the lads have their work done anyway. But obviously, any extra you can help, you give advice. I'm right in saying Longford unbeaten. You are indeed. So lastly, on the football, before we speak about your your work and and the fact that you're you're combining a job with football as well. There must be a real sense in the group of if we can keep this run going of you know six league games and and stuff of of not being beaten you have a good chance of finishing those top four spots because if the teams around you don't beat you and you continue to beat the other teams that you have done so far, it gives you a great, great chance. And there's not too many other teams in, in the country. I think there's nobody else probably who, who are beaten, certainly not in the first division anyway. No, uh, the Dundalk were the last. Um, they were beaten on Friday. So we were close against Wexford, um, but we never gave up. And as I said, it's that never say die attitude that we have at the moment. So we'll be looking. I think it starts with defending, and I don't mean defenders. I mean defending from the front. Like the lads will will press in the right areas, they don't just run into players with with no real real press. So starts from there and then clean sheets are obviously a foundation because we'll generally score. Um, I think Longford only kept eight late clean sheets last year. We already have four. So we have a target and it, it is in double figure so I have a personal target also so I'll be um, I'll be aiming to fulfil both of them. And I think as long as we keep keeping them um, clean sheets we will we will obviously win games or get points so um, yeah we're, we're just taking them one game at a time we're not looking too far we have a goal we know what we want to do so we'll, we'll try our best to play well we will have off nights but if we can stay unbeaten we have a great chance and Lee across all of this you're also working full time and it's a theme that I, I like to explore in the podcast with different guests because you know not everybody in the league is, is full time there's probably eight premier clubs and that's it everybody else is either in school in college or in work along with football and you're one of those so tell us what the day job is yeah, generally um, I've been through a couple of jobs like over time. Um, I normally do sales rep. I've worked for Lucasaid, Blenders, Sauce Manufacturer, um, Diageo covering Guinness and um, a couple of other products. And now I'm uh, with Heineken. Um, so yeah, it's grand. Like you, you do your work and you have that bit of flexibility for sport and it kind of suits me. Um, but obviously the goal would be to a full-time footballer. Like, um, it is hard to kind of be as professional as you can, like, whereas a good friend of mine, Pico, he's, he's living in his own home now, he's playing full-time the last three years, and he's, he's an ultimate pro anyway, but he gets to do it without any distractions. So um, 
I, I, that's that's the goal. But I have a couple of things that I want to work towards to actually put that in place. You know, so. Yeah, you mentioned Pigo. That's Roberto Lopez of Shamrock Rovers, and also a good friend of yours, is Keith Buckley from Bowes. He is. And Dave, our last image there involves uh, Lee Stacey, Keith Buckley, and a very exotic animal. <laughs> so yes, uh, the lads went off. Is it to Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand in the off season? Last off season, yeah, we did. Did we went? Uh, we went traveling for a couple of weeks. Is that a monkey? It is. Okay, where did you meet him? Met him in um, PP Island, Monkey Beach. Okay, nice. Unbelievable. Monkey Beach. T- t- go on. Explain to us because the whole League of Ireland are away in the winter because yeah. they get a week off in the summer and you're off, of course, for a long off season. And, and a lot of the players go off to different places around the world. And you guys went off for a few weeks and, and did the islands and stuff and, and yeah. left some, some cool animals. Oh, it was unbelievable. Um, so basically, you can rent the boat out for the day or half a day or whatever it was. So we, we took a half day and um, we went to Monkey Beach. You can get pictures with the monkeys. You're told not to bring food, but um, you can. We didn't know, but some of them can be vicious. Like if you if they're trying to pull something off you don't react just let them take it otherwise they bite you we seen someone getting bitten it was gas but um, yeah they were we had baby ones and they were crawling up around us and everything like that it was it was brilliant and then we went off to what the beach did you ever see the beach with Leonardo DiCaprio uh, Maya Bay okay go on that's closed for a car rebuild so then we we were off swimming but Pico obviously um, he ruptured a tendon in his finger so he couldn't really partake in many of the activities that we were doing. And we went to a lagoon and things like that. That's just on one day. It was unbelievable. I'd recommend to anyone to travel to Southeast Asia. And I think we're going to look at trying to do something similar again this year. And just lastly, Lee, on that yourself, Roberto and Keith are friends since you all play for balls together. Is that right? That's right, yeah. And it's something, again, in the league, it's so common. And it's what I love about the league, that everybody knows everybody. And when you play against them, like, for example, actually, at your long, long for game the last time, Roberto and Bucco were at the match. Yeah, that's right. I watched a bit of the second half with them. And they were talking about, you know, when balls play Rovers and the, if they have to smash each other in a fair tackle or get one you know get his mate sent off or diving or do something they will do it because they have to do it for their team but once the match is over they're best friends again and that's something that's so common across the league and it's something that I really love and at the same time it's unique and strange that kind of people are so close and best friends even some coaches and managers I think yeah. they're at each other on the side and once the game is over they're, they're mates again yeah like um, the three of us we go for a coffee at least once a week it used to be tours but changed to Wednesday because we train she was in Thursday but um like them boys, like they play against each other obviously more than, more than I would, but someone asked me last week, is it not strange for them? And I said, no, um, it's war like on the, on the pitch. Then, but there's, yeah. no, there's no friendship and they will, they go in hard and the tackle, no problem. They wouldn't go to hurt anyone now, but they'll, they'll go hard. And Bucco as well, he'll try and get you sent off, no problem. He's probably one of the, he's one of the most intelligent footballers I've ever seen yeah. and played with, like, especially for Bray. Like, I don't think many people know this, but I think he had 14 assists playing at right, right back. Right back, correct, yeah. And he... Um, had never played there before and, he and hasn't played there since. And didn't take a set piece. Okay. So that's that's unbelievable. Like, um, So I, I give him that credit. I don't give him much. But um, he is very clever and he will. He, he, he's very cute. Like He'll, he'll try and, uh, especially Pico, try and get him sent off. And well, hopefully I'll see the two boys again in uh, City Calling Stadium on Saturday for uh, Longford against Brayley. Thanks, Vinny, for coming in. Thanks, James. It's been a pleasure.